Today, we're going to be talking about the three most common types of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, what their common features are, and how you can distinguish between them. Hi, I'm Dr. Claire Francomano, and this is my YouTube channel where we talk about all things related to the Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders. The most common type of EDS by far is the hypermobile type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. The hypermobile type in the literature, it's published as between 1 in 3,000 and 1 in 5,000 people in terms of its frequency, but we believe that it may be much more common than that. So there's a lot of work that still needs to be done about the epidemiology of the hypermobile type, but suffice it to say that it is definitely the most common of the 13 types of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And one of the common features of the hypermobile type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, well, the joint hypermobility is definitely the highest among those. We expect to see generalized joint hypermobility in people with the hypermobile type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And we also look for very soft, mildly stretchy skin and easy bruising are other features that we often see. There are a set of diagnostic criteria that are applied to determine whether people actually meet the common diagnostic criteria for hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome because this is the one type of the 13 types for which we do not have a molecular test to offer. We do not yet know the underlying genetic cause of hypermobile EDS, and therefore we rely on those diagnostic criteria to make the diagnosis. So joint hypermobility and skin findings are really among the most common and prevalent features of the hypermobile type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. But we also know that people who live with hypermobile EDS have many comorbid conditions, including chronic pain. They may have dysautonomia or POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, where they find it difficult to go from lying down to sitting or standing without becoming dizzy or woozy or even passing out. And they may have a condition called mast cell activation in which the mast cells, which are one of the cells of the immune system, release inflammatory molecules into the tissue and cause all kinds of complications in many, many different organ systems. So the hypermobile type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is not just hypermobility, but is really quite a complex multi-system condition which can profoundly affect the quality of life for people who live with it. Now, the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is the type that was originally described by doctors Ehlers and Danlos when the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome was originally described. The classical type of EDS also presents with easy bruising, but the skin is much more stretchy than the skin that we see in the hypermobile type. In addition to the stretchiness of the skin, it is also unusually fragile, so it will break with minimal trauma, and we see a very typical pattern of scars on the shins of people who live with the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and this is usually caused by trauma to the shins when uh, children are just learning to walk and they walk into coffee tables and furniture and things, and the skin breaks open and creates very typical scars and bruising on the legs. These scars are often called hemosiderotic scars because they look like they're perpetually bruised. There's a deposition of hemosiderin, which is a darker colored pigment, into the skin, and the scars just stay. They look like they're permanently bruised. Okay, the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is caused by pathogenic variants in one of two genes. These are the genes that encode type 5 collagen, and the genes are called COL5A1 and COL5A2. So if there is unusually stretchy skin, very fragile skin, 
excessively easy bruising and joint hypermobility, we think to test for the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, looking for variants in call 5A1 and call 5A2. The classical type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is estimated to be present in between 1 in 10,000 and 1 in 20,000 individuals. The vascular type is the rarest of the three most common types of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. It is estimated to have a prevalence of between 1 in 100,000 and 1 in 200,000 people. And the vascular type of EDS is characterized by particularly fragility of the blood vessels. So the blood vessels may develop aneurysms, dissections, or rupture, and these are light threatening complications. The arteries that are most typically affected in the vascular type of EDS are the blood vessels, in, they're the medium-sized arteries in the abdominal cavity. So blood vessels like the splenic artery, the hepatic artery, and the gastric artery, which go to the spleen, the liver, and the stomach, respectively. Sometimes we can see involvement of the carotid arteries or the iliac arteries. And what happens with these, they're often just out of the blue, sudden terrible pain and bleeding internally, which as I say, can be life-threatening. The other complication that we can see in the vascular type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is rupture of the hollow organs, most particularly the bowel and specifically the sigmoid colon, which may rupture. Sometimes we can see rupture of the bladder and sometimes the uterus in the third month of pregnancy may rupture. So the fragility of the hollow organs is another prominent feature of of the vascular type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And sometimes people with the vascular type of EDS will not have generalized joint hypermobility, but we may just see hypermobility in the small joints of the hands and feet. And one unusual feature that I've heard Dr. Peter Byers describe in patients with vascular EDS is that sometimes they sleep with their eyes open. So that can be a characteristic that would make one think about possibly testing for the vascular type of EDS if there are other features in the family history or the personal history that are suggestive of this diagnosis. We establish a diagnosis of vascular EDS by looking for pathogenic variants in the gene that encodes type 3 collagen. This is called COL3A1. And if we see changes in that gene that are likely to cause disease, that can establish a diagnosis of vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So those are the three most common types of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, the hypermobile type, the classical type, and the vascular type. And if you're interested in more information about diagnosing the hypermobile type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, I have a separate video describing that, as well as a video on how to know if you have generalized joint hypermobility. Thanks so much for spending the time with me today, and I wish you the very best on your journey.